Getting older is definitely not for sissies. A multitude of body parts fail. Among the parts failing are the beta cells of the pancreas. And this fail has big consequences. Glucose intolerance and then type 2 diabetes and all its nasty consequences. Now the current fix for someone with type 2 diabetes is to outsource the job of glucose management using medications. It works up to a point. But the uncomfortable truth is good glycemic control is not enough to stop the progression of the disease. So most people with type 2 diabetes dream of fixing their beta cells. And there are legions of scientists who share this dream. They are working towards getting them back one way or another. But this begs the question, are the beta cells really dead? This is what a team of Korean researchers dared ask. They did a little poking and prodding, and well, pff, their answer was somewhat surprising. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we poke around looking at what might need fixing in type 2 diabetes. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster helping you battle sugar gremlins, heffalumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, to arrive at this unexpected conclusion, the research team did something quite radical. They performed a beta islet transplantation with old islets. Now, islets are not beta cells. They are the irregular patches of endocrine tissue found in the pancreas. There are millions of them, and beta cells are just one of the distinct cell types found in them. The islets that they used had spent their best days in male C57BL6 mice. But since the mice and beta cells were already 18 months old, which is middle-aged for a mouse, these beta cells were past their prime. Now, now, they weren't kaput. They were quite capable of handling normal sugar levels. This can be seen here. There's absolutely no difference between the young and old islets. So these middle-aged animals were not diabetic. But <coughs> they were a little glucose intolerant when they got a very big sugar rush. The sugar level spiked. Here you can see the glycemic response to 4 grams per kilogram of glucose. The old islets are definitely compromised. Now, to do their islet transplantation, individual islets of Langerhans were carefully removed and popped into the anterior chamber of the eye of a young mouse. Now, if you're thinking, the chamber of the eye, gross! The reason the islets are put inside the eye is because eyes make a great nursery for the transplanted islets. They're inside the body, which means it's warm and cozy, but they're hidden away from the immune system of the animal they've been put in. This is very important. The unwanted attention of the immune system is one of the reasons beta cell transplants have not gone mainstream. If a trigger-happy immune system has destroyed the natural islets, which is what happens in type 1 diabetes, transplanted cells arrive with a target on their belly and their days are numbered. So hidden inside the anterior chamber of the eye, the beta cells are safe. And from here, they can hunker down and do what they do best, make insulin in response to circulating glucose levels. Now, none of this is new technology. What makes this study different is the age of the islets. Using young islets to rescue mice made diabetic using the beta cell killing drug streptozosin is easy. But our team was using old islets. Remember, they weren't kaput, but they weren't in pristine condition either. The big question was, would the old beta cells work? The answer, well, yes, they worked 
remarkably well. Here you can see the results. These graphs show the glucose levels during glucose tolerance tests performed at 3, 4.5 and, and 7 and 10 months post-transplantation. The green is what happened when the islets were young, the brown when the islets were old. The old islets get off to a shaky start, but once they found their groove, they were capable of controlling glucose levels. In the end, the old islets were just as good as the young ones. Exciting stuff! The beta cells are not irreparably broken. For human oldies facing glucose tolerance issues, this is good news. This study hints that all the old islets need is a little TLC to find their groove. Now, our team had a hunch the TLC the islets needed was a blood vessel upgrade, something that seamlessly happens in young animals, but often gets bogged down in the aged. So they took a look at the plumbing in the transplanted islets. It was clear. The islets had expanded. This is the photo of the same graph taken at three months and then again nine months. The little asterisk marks the position of the pupil. The team confirmed this expansion was accompanied by the refurbishment of the blood vessels. This squiggly things are showing the blood vessels. You can see the density and the diameter of the blood vessels has improved. The TLC provided by the eye chamber involved an improved blood supply, hinting that good beta cell function hinges on a good blood supply. Aish. If your beta cells are struggling, there's a good chance their blood supply is poor. So that brings us to the question, can you help them? Well, allowing your beta cells to recuperate inside an eye chamber is obviously not an option. But you can rejuvenate your blood vessels. I know it sounds kind of hard, but it's not. Blood vessels are continuously being remodeled. Even in oldies, you just need to create the right signals. Now, the process of making new blood vessels from existing capillary beds is called angiogenesis. It's a tightly orchestrated process, and it involves half a dozen signals telling the cells aligning the blood vessels what to do. But the process is first and foremost demand-driven. Where cells demand oxygen, blood vessels appear. So if you can drive up demand, you can remodel blood vessels. This is what a serious session of pushing and pulling at the gym does. Now, if you're thinking, well, pushing and pulling is beyond me, it can be hacked. Yeah. In fact, any strategy that gets the blood flowing will help. Things to try include reining in insulin, lowering your ages and boosting nitric oxide. Improving blood flow will help you create better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track, visit our website. Browse our library and enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who's praying for new beta cells? Share this video with them so they know what steps they can take to improve the situation. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.